Yo, 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 ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Stuck in the Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Uncle AK. And I'm Reflex. Hey, how you feeling, bro? I'm feeling good, man. It's cold outside, though. It is cold outside, yeah. but... It's uh, supposed to snow tomorrow. Yeah, it's supposed to snow tomorrow. We're not going to date this podcast because we're taping on a Wednesday. And uh, we appreciate everybody who checks this podcast out on a weekly basis. This is Stuck in the Middle Podcast. Welcome. Uh, if you haven't subscribed and you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe. Um, and hit us up on all social media platforms. That's SITM Podcast on all social media platforms if this is your first time we welcome you and again please subscribe i uh, definitely want to remind you of our sponsor they are perfect office solution they are sponsoring this particular uh, episode they provide affordable professional and flexible office space for entrepreneurs in the dmv area starting at just 4.99 so if you use promo code sitm podcast you get 10 percent off your monthly lease that's a good deal ak yes, i'm excited sir. for this man most deaf man yeah it's november i know you're somebody who who who, who cares so much about their finances man like, yeah man if, if like you, you have always to. about man no hundred I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna leave with the parents so i could take care of the student loans and all whatnot yeah, man. so you know you know i'm gonna leave with them till they kick me out but nah listen you know? it's, i feel like we're providing a great service here like i'm gonna i'm gonna tell you this right now it's november people can listen to this and have that information early yeah prepare for next year get most that def. resolution get all that stuff out of the way right, i'm excited right. for this let them know we got a building yeah, bro most def, most def, man she is a tax attorney she is the owner and managing member of tillman llc and we have the pleasure we had the pleasure of watching her win the perfect pitch competition by perfect office solutions a couple months back yeah yeah it's none other than sakina tillman welcome to stuck in the middle podcast yeah, thank man. you thank you thank you it's so great to be here yeah thank you so much for coming you're welcome. I want to I wanna break the ice like this. <laughs> What's wrong with H&R Block? <laughs> <laughs> well, the issue with H&R Block is that some of the um, people that work there, they don't have enough training to prepare tax returns. Hmm. So as a result, they'll take this crash course. It's a few hours. And then afterwards, they are, quote unquote, ready to prepare tax returns. So as a result, that... Um, allows them to make several errors. Now, and there's some people that are accountants mm -hmm. um, that has experience with tax prep that would decide to work there. Maybe they're retired, or maybe this is just something extra for them to do. Mm -hmm. But other than that, it's just pretty much them taking a crash course and you're giving them their your tax information to prepare your tax return. Do you ever use h and Block? No, I have not. What do you recommend as an alternative to h and Block? Hire a tax professional. Before we even get down into the, you <laughs> know what I mean, the like the, the nitty gritties, you know what I mean? Let's just start basic, you know, not basic, but let's just start from, you know, ground up. Who is um, Sakina? Me. Um, well, I am an attorney, but that's not all who I am. Um, I am someone from Camden, New Jersey, raised in Philadelphia. I am a diehard Eagles fan. Oh, yes, we did goodness. win the Super Bowl oh, this my year. Goodness. <laughs> Flying Eagles fly. You're talking um, to a Washington fan here. Okay? Oh, oh no. If you were a Cowboys fan, I would easily just walk up. Oh, walk shoot. Away. Yeah, I'm <laughs> like a Cowboy. We, we never had that. I'd be a first and stuck in the middle. Somebody <laughs> yeah. walk away. But, but yes, I'm a diehard Eagles fan. I love football. Um, I enjoy traveling and I enjoy spending time with my family. Hmm. Reflex over here, you know, he actually calls you a superhero, like that, a superhero that you got superpowers. Yeah, I think you got you superpowers. I mean? <laughs> really? Yeah, because you relieve people of their tax burdens. That's a, that's a superpower. You think so? Yeah. W w wouldn't you agree? Yes, I will agree. Why would you agree? You know, tax is something that people are afraid of. You know, you'll hear different um, commercials that hey if you don't pay your taxes you're going to jail and a lot of times the tax code is very complex so when someone gets a notice from the irs or the state they're not sure what to do and so for me after you know several years of going to school um, researching and helping clients my goal is to make tax very understanding mm. and so something that someone will read that has no experience with tax, I can make them understand it. And my goal is to, you know, when I help my clients, my, my special powers come in where I'm protecting their assets. You know, people may not know this, but when you have outstanding tax debt or you have outstanding state tax debt, they have things in place where they can actually um, get a hold of your assets to help pay the taxes that are owed. They come, that's like when there's like a repo your stuff in. 
Well, they can place a lien on your house. They can mm-hmm. garnish your wages. They can garnish 25% of your wages. They can actually levy your bank account. They can actually make sure that there's a freeze on your bank account. Um, so there's so many things that they can do. If you have a refund, they can take your refund away. For average dummy like me, what's a tax code? When I hear tax code, I'm just thinking like matrix numbers. <laughs> so, well, the tax code, it means the internal revenue code. And so what the code does, it specifies there's different sections that is law that explains how tax is calculated and what are the exceptions and what are the general rules. Mm. For somebody who's watching right now, you know what I mean, like tax lawyer, like is that a lawyer lawyer or is that like some, like, I don't know. I mean, why did you decide to become a lawyer, not yet alone a tax lawyer? Oh, okay. So I always wanted to be a lawyer since I was eight. So that was something that I just stuck to. There was no plan B for me. Um, so I knew I wanted to be an attorney. Actually, I really wanted to be a government um, contract attorney because I like to write. So I wanted to just write contracts. And then my second year in law school, I took a federal income tax course because I'm a math person. I love math. I was a math Yeesh. tutor in college. Blech. And everyone told me that, hey, you may like tax. And I was like, no, <laughs> I don't like it. Math. But I actually loved the class. It was one of my favorite classes in law school because tax is not just about having someone that owes a liability, but looking at the numbers and figuring out how can you negotiate. And that's when I realized after that class, I can't see myself doing anything else. No criminal law, no family law. It was just strictly tax. And, you know, since I've been practicing, I never deviated from it. At eight, you know, um, what was I doing at eight? <laughs> I was playing soccer. Yeah, man. You know, in I, was the molding, rain. I was molding little castles in the mud, well, you know, in the rain with mud and stuff like that. I didn't have, I didn't have a clue of what I even wanted to be. You know, it wasn't yet alone. Like that wasn't of a conversation in my household. So how did you? come about wanting to be a lawyer at eight well i come from humble beginnings Mm -hmm. so you know i grew up poor you know my mother um along the way definitely um started to get great jobs and we were able to get out of that you know um area in in camden new jersey but you know when you see people and family members are not really doing anything in their life you want better for yourself and you know as a child i would see different people on tv and i'm like hey i want to do something where i can help someone and you know you can help people in different professions whether it's a doctor counselor but i like social science and you know social studies and i'm like i like the law was fascinating to me so learning about social studies in third grade and realizing, hey, this may be something relating to a lawyer. And then when I got to high school, I had like this um, legal studies class where we were role play, being an attorney and a judge. And I was like, this is something I can see myself yeah. doing. And I just stuck to it. You've been back to, you know, your, your roots as far as like New Jersey, Philly. What are you you've been back to your bruises yes i still visit my family is still there i have some family here in maryland but yes i always visit back home it's nothing yeah. like being home and so tillman uh llc is here based here in maryland yes it walk is. us through uh, you know saying like the, the birth of that what sparked that you know is it like a tax firm tax attorney firm yes so before i get to tillman llc i actually um have another business it's called tillman tax services where mm-hmm. i strictly prepare tax returns and I formed that on January the 14th 2015 and at that time I was a graduate student at University of Maryland um, University of Baltimore I'm sorry and at that time it was my last semester in school I was graduating in May I did not have a job and I needed to figure out what can I do to pay my bills and I knew that I like tax I knew that I can prepare a tax return. So I started that, just preparing tax returns. Um, And for me to gain clients, I formed a um, Instagram page where I would do Tax Tuesdays and create funny memes Mm -hmm. to capture people's attention. Yeah, I was looking at them joints this week dying. (laughs) And and the thing is about the tax memes is that, you know, tax is very complicated, Mm -hmm. but I like comedy. So I Mm -hmm. try to figure out how can I capture someone's attention to make them laugh but it's at the same time they're able to learn. Some of the memes are actually you. Yeah, I have pictures <laughs> of me where my hair is not done, but I want people to 
you know, look at this and say, hey, I'm laughing, but hey, I'm actually learning something. Mm -hmm. So some people are like, you have embarrassing pictures of yourself. I'm like, I don't care about right. that. And so moving forward, after, you know, working, having that business, you know, I started thinking about, hey, you know, I like to represent people before the IRS. You know, I am an attorney. Why not? And then last year, March 31st, I decided to um, form Tim LLC, where I focus on um, clients that have a tax liability with the IRS or the state, mm -hmm. business formation, and just, you know, pretty much tax planning. Something separate from just preparing tax returns. So do you have a nine to five or is this just strictly your business? I do have a, a I do have a nine to five and I have both businesses. Speak a little bit about, you know, balancing both. Um, I'm really big on having a calendar and realizing that there's only 24 hours in a day. So I make my day very useful. You know, I figure out, you know, if I work nine to five, there's but so much I can do when I get off of work. So I strategize mm -hmm. maybe four hours when I come home or four hours when I come home, I strictly work on my business. And if I need to wake up early in the morning, I would do that. Sometimes I go to bed late, but when I'm working on my business, it doesn't feel like work. So sometimes I will find myself going to bed at one thirty or two o'clock in the morning. I'm like, okay, well, I think it's time for me to lay down and get up to start my day again. Yeah. But that's what I do. I think a planner is very important in having some type of balance where it's not just work. So I make sure I enjoy time with my friends. I make sure I enjoy time with um, my family and make sure I enjoy time having some alone time, going out and doing things that's fun for me. Well, well what are some of those things that's fun for you? I like to shop. No. <laughs> I like it shows, to, it shows. <laughs> <laughs> I like to travel. I like to go to different restaurants. Yeah. Try different food. Yeah. What are your struggles? My struggles? Yeah. Hmm. You know, stuck in the middle, that's the standard. You gotta <laughs> one well, one struggle that I still face is that knowing that I will make mistakes. And you know, me I can become a perfectionist. Mm -hmm. Um, but at the same time, you know, my mistakes make me who I am. Mm -hmm. So I know that I'm going to continuously make mistakes throughout my life. But it's just that struggle being a perfectionist. How do you overcome those those times where you, you know, feel like struggling? Um, well, I had a lot of struggles. But when it comes to a perfectionist, I realized that, hey, I'm not going to always get it right. And then when I get something wrong, it's like sit back and figure out, OK, why did I get this wrong? And figure out what can I do moving forward so it doesn't happen again. Yeah, gotcha. How do you handle stress? How do I handle stress? Working out, going to the <laughs> gym. I think that's, for me, that's very important. Um, I like to eat healthy. So for me, another stress reliever is to cook. So I like to cook and, and make dinner. That helps a lot. What services do you offer on the Tillman um, LLC? Yeah. Tell me now, I'll see um, if someone has a tax liability with the IRS, I am able to help them get into a reasonable payment plan, um, such as an installment agreement where you're paying monthly or what you hear on the radio called um, pennies on the dollars called offer and compromise, mm -hmm. where I'm able to get you into a settlement with the IRS where you're paying less than what you actually owe. Or if you are, you know, in a financial disarray, I'm able to get you in a status call currently not collectible. Um, also, I help people form businesses. Um, what I find most is that a lot of times people form LLCs and think that's the best business entity for them. Mm. And it may not be. They may be okay with just being a sole proprietor. Um, but pretty much doing business formation, really doing some tax planning, explaining how someone can be taxed, contingent upon their business that they selected, um, as well as if they're just a person that has a nine to five, helping them strategize as to how much they should have taken out of their paychecks. Um, if they're considering purchasing property, um, how does that affect them from a tax perspective? If they sell it, how does that affect them? Mm. You, how do you, yeah, go ahead, my bad. How do you build for your services? So it depends. I take in consideration how long it will take me to get the work done. Um, sometime it may be a flat fee or sometimes it's hourly. Yeah. I remember um, going back to um, the start when you asked her about... Uh, H&R Block? Yeah, H&R Block, and she was mentioning the different like, difference between just taking a crash course mm -hmm. over being a tax attorney. Um, I think the crash course is a CPA, right, if I'm not mistaken? 
the crash course at yeah. H&R Block takes. Yeah. So, no, so a CPA, that's a certified public accountant, they actually have to take a exam that's mm-hmm. several hours for them to um, master so that way they can prepare tax returns. They can do so many things. So, but with H&R Block, it's pretty much a crash course just figuring out how to prepare tax returns. Mm-hmm. They don't really go into depth um, as it relates to the laws mm-hmm. and the exceptions. I'm more curious about the difference between a CPA and a tax attorney. Oh, that's a really good question. So a, a CPA is someone that can do various things. They can prepare tax returns. They can provide financial services such as helping someone with um, financial advising. Mm. They can also do what's called bookkeeping. A tax attorney more focused on the actual law. Um, they're able to represent the, the actual client before the IRS and go to tax court um, in the event that that needs to happen. But the most important thing is that a tax attorney is able to give someone legal advice regarding the law. A CPA cannot. A CPA cannot go to court and represent someone. Can you be both? Yes. Yeah, so there's some tax attorneys that are also CPAs. So it's just pretty much in order for you to become a CPA, you have to have a certain amount of credit hours. Most people that are CPAs um, have an accountant background and then they sit for the exam. And then after they sit for the exam, sometimes people may decide to go to law school and then later um, take the bar exam. So which is better to hire um, between the two? It depends on what you're looking for. Um just like when I did the um, perfect off the perfect pitch yeah. uh, competition, one of the biggest things that one of the guys mentioned is about having an attorney on your side. Mm-hmm. It depends on what you're really looking for. If you're looking for someone that's going to help you just pretty much just plan and you may not seek legal advice, then I will recommend maybe an accountant. But it's also good to really have an attorney to make sure that you're doing things legally and to make sure you have contracts in place so that way, in the event that someone sues you, you have the right terms in the contract that someone signed. You write these contracts? In- yes, I prepare contracts for my clients. Okay. Mm, man. Tough, man. <laughs> I wish I could write like that, man. But, you know. Yeah, I got to hire you because <laughs> my back is getting secure. You'd be, su- you'd be surprised. There's some people that I know that, that would do business with someone and everything was verbally. And then when it was time to get their money back, because there was no written contract, you can't really prove. Nah, I got to see the dotted line that come with a dollar sign. Right. Yeah. And I'm talking about thousands of dollars yeah. that was lost. Sheesh. How do you feel about mixing like family and business, like family business, business family? Especially like, with tech. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, how do you <laughs> feel about that, that combination? Meaning like helping family? Yeah, you know, like. I'm very selective oh. on who I decide to work with. And the reason why, it's not because I don't love my family. I do. Thanks. But the thing is, when you're working with family, they had this idea, oh, that's my little cousin or that's my little sister. I can, you know, have her do this and I can have her charge me a lower rate. Mm-hmm. And I think sometimes you have to be cognizant of what family members you work with because they may not value your services as much because they are family. So I don't take on everyone as a client, mm-hmm. whether they're family or not. So piggyback to that question, this is what I'm really here for today, to be honest. Okay. What's the secret to having a larger tax return eh, at the end of the year? <laughs> so, <laughs> so for me, if you look at my memes, I actually made a meme about this. My goal is to make sure that the returns are done correctly. And how the returns are done correctly is making sure that everything gets reported and to make sure that you're having enough taxes being withheld. So I'm not in the business of trying to get someone a big refund. <laughs> My goal is to make sure that the return is prepared correctly. However, if you want, <laughs> if you want to make up. sure that you do not owe, then I recommend that you have enough taxes taken out every year. Yeah. I'm good. I'm good with that. You know, so as long as I, awesome. as long as I get a little check, you know, I don't, I don't want to owe no IRS. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I don't care if I don't get anything. I just don't want to order IRS. That's like it, And that's just making you know sure I mean? that your withholdings are correct. Right. Should somebody be concerned about an IRS audit? Like, you know what I'm saying? Uh, when, they, you know, get the, when they do the returns, should, should I be concerned about an IRS audit? Like, if IRS just hit me up like, oh, I'm auditing you, should I be concerned? So there's several reasons why someone can get audited. Someone can get audited based on just verification. You were randomly selected. And when that happens, that doesn't mean that the return was done incorrectly. They're just saying, hey, we randomly pick you. Um, please substantiate all the items that was reported on your tax return. Mm. The second way someone gets audited, if the IRS reviewed the return that was filed and realized there are some things that doesn't seem right and it raised a red flag. Typically, when someone has like outstanding expenses on their tax return for their business to the extent that they have a loss like a huge loss or maybe there was a missing w-2 mm -hmm. or maybe there was a missing 1099 another way is called audit reconsideration yeah um, and pretty much what that means is that mm -hmm. let's say that you haven't filed tax returns in years but the irs has copies of your w-2s what they can do they can compute how much they think your tax will be based on the income that they have and so for audit reconsideration, that's pretty much having someone prepare the returns based on the information that you provide them and say, hey, IRS, I know that you have this tax liability, but based on the returns being prepared, this is how much they actually owe. I'm curious. Do you have a, do you own a library at home? Bro, I was, I was just <laughs> <laughs> A library? <laughs> yeah. Well, I do have some IRS books that I read, uh, but I'm always on. I mean, like, I'm, I'm always just... on the IRS website reading, and I have a subscription where I get tips every single day. Mm. I'm just curious because you're just saying like this, just, just talking like, blah, 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 <laughs> like, you <know>? like no. <laughs> I think when you when you love what you do, uh -huh. you become a master at it. Thanks. Now, Thanks. I don't know every little Gems. thing, but I love reading about the IRS. I love reading about the IRS. Facts. Would you work for the IRS? Would, would... No, because my goal is to protect people against the IRS. Mm. IRS bad? Yes, they're bad. They can be. I don't know. Speaking on that, right? Um, you won the perfect of um, the perfect office solutions peach perfect competition a yeah. couple months back. Congrats! Thank you. Know, you. Congrats! Thank you know, you. did you spend the money well? Actually, I still have it saved. My goal is to use it next year to purchase a new software for my law firm. Dang. Yeah, and you mentioned that too. So speak a little, a little bit about preparing for this competition. So honestly, I was not considering even, you know, um, participating because I was like, I'm not sure if I have enough time. I'm not sure what I have is just enough. So I took a stab at it and said, hey, I can either win or lose. Why not? And so I looked at some of the requirements about, you know, having a three minute pitch. And I thought about what can I say to get my audience attention. You know, every time I go somewhere, I'm always pitching my business. Anytime someone talks about tax, I'm like, hey, and we'll start a conversation. Anywhere I go, I know how to talk about my business or talk about how I can help someone else. And so I did a PowerPoint and pretty much the PowerPoint was short, brief, straight to the point, mm. really explaining the services that I have. And there's a lot of services, but I try to condense it in a way that people can understand and something that was catchy. Mm -hmm. That's just like your website, you know. I mean, it's just precise, you know, straight to the point. Not a lot of information. That's all the, you know, tax websites. You mm -hmm. go on there, it's just because you can get confused. Yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, everything. But in your opinion, what made you stand out of the other nine, no, eight individuals that participated in the um, competition? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're putting me on the spot. I think what made me stand out was that. I didn't have a lot of I didn't have a lot of material. I felt like some of the competitors they were just talking about a lot of information and not having it really reduced. But I think what made me stand out was that I was very comfortable with the services that I provide. Um, two, I've learned that in business, you know, when you're trying to get a client, never brag about yourself. You know, you're always figuring out how you can help someone else. So whenever I'm talking about my business, it's never about me because that's not the purpose of me having a law firm. My purpose was to create a law firm that is reasonable in such a way where I'm able to help people. And so that's what I think made me stand out from 
the other competitors. It's never about me. Mm-hmm. I mean, I was in the audience that day, and he was mesmerized. And anyways, I was in the audience that day, <laughs> and um, I was paying attention to the judges. Mm-hmm. You know, I, mean, I was listening, but paying attention to the judges. Like everybody that went on, I'm like, I mean, you could see like that little wrinkle, you know, go up, down, go up, down. But once you went on there, everybody was like, okay. So money. Like, yeah, more. <laughs> like, they wanted more, but it was short. That's why they had so much questions at the end, if I'm not mistaken. Was it you? I believe so. Anyways, well, yeah, that's why they had questions. Even when you were walking away, they were still asking you questions because the information was so short. Well, in my opinion, it was so it was so short. Uh, what prize did you win? I won $1,000 cash, and then I won three months of free rent. From Perfect Office Solution. Yes. Who's sponsor stuck in What? The, 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 the office space. <laughs> yes, I actually, it's funny because I actually signed my lease in July. And so when I, you know, you know, um, applied for the competition, I was like, well, hey, this would be another way for me to save money. Why not? But no, I had the office space prior to me even doing a competition. Mm. So we, uh, you know, speaking of office space, we speak to a lot of entrepreneurs here on Stuck in Riddle Podcast. Um, What's the difference between a tax code for a big corporation and the small business owners, like, you know, entrepreneurs, everyday entrepreneurs that we speak to on this platform? You mean like what tax code may apply to them versus... Like a big corporation like Amazon or I don't know, whatever, yeah. Are you trying to figure out more so like the expenses that Mm -hmm. someone can Mm -hmm. write off? Yeah. The, well, the main thing with whether you are a, a small business or a corporation, you can still write off pretty much the same things. But I think the most important thing is to figure out what are you actually writing off? A lot of times people have business expenses and they're just writing off everything. Like they're writing off, hey, well, I paid my rent. That should be um, a business expense. And it's it's all about, okay, what type of expenses do you have and figuring out is that expense allocated towards your corporation? So it doesn't matter if you are a small business or a corporation, LLC, you can write expenses off related to your business. The question becomes, what expenses are you writing off? And based on my experience, um, I'll work with some um, clients that will prepare their tax return by themselves. And then when I look at their return, I realize that they were reporting items that were not even business related. Mm. Now, surely you've had time to look at it, the uh, Trump tax plan, the GOP tax plan. Mm-hmm. I have. In your opinion, what's good about it and what's bad about it? Because it's, it's it's a hot topic right now. You know what I'm saying? It's a very hot topic. I actually did some um, seminars about it this year. Okay. The good thing, the good thing, and it's not so many good things. The good thing, in my opinion, that it lowered the tax rate. Um, so some people that are employees, they should have saw some type of increase in their pay in February, maybe between fifty dollars to almost a hundred dollars, or a little less than that. So the tax rate has decreased. May it depends, maybe I don't know, <laughs> but um, the tax rate has decreased. Um, another thing that is somewhat good, but it's still a little um, unclear, is that there is a tax deduction for business owners. It's called the Qualifying Business Deduction under Section 199A. Dang. And pretty much what it said <laughs> <laughs> and pretty much what it says, if I can just break it down in layman terms, that contingent upon your total income, taxable income that you earn for the year, you may be able to get a tax um, deduction of 20%. Mm-hmm. However, um, there's been tax practitioners that's been sending um, letters and memos to the IRS explaining how does that um, how does that come into play? How is this going to look on a tax return? And I haven't seen any feedback yet, so I've been looking on the IRS website. One of the biggest downfalls is that they have increased the standard deduction. So let me explain what a standard deduction is. Um, when someone gets paid a salary, maybe $80,000 a year, they're not taxed on that. They're taxed on what's called their taxable income. And how you get to that is your total salary that you made reduced by a standard deduction that the IRS gives everyone based on your age and filing status. So if you're single for 2017, um, the standard deduction was $6,350. So that reduces the amount that you earn for the year. So the IRS does help you and give you some type of deductions to reduce your, your income. Does that make sense? 
Did I confuse you? I'm single, so yeah, it makes sense. Okay. So, <laughs> so that's the standard deduction. So what the new tax reform has done, it increased that to the extent that it's almost double. So for 2018, the standard deduction went from $6,350 to 12000 The downfall is that some taxpayers may not be able to do what's called itemized. So if you have a house and you have a mortgage, you have real property taxes that you're paying. Assets. Um, and then you have um, charitable donations. You may not be able to claim them because how to itemize deductions come into play is that if those expenses exceed your standard deduction that you're able to have, then you're able to itemize. And so a lot of charitable um, organizations don't like the code because because of the increase in the standard deduction, most people may not want to donate because it's not going to help them on the long end for tax purposes. So that's one of the things I really I don't like about it. I think on top of that, the changes that were made, I think that it wasn't taking consideration some other like exceptions to exceptions to the rule. So I just want to see how it's going to play out. When you read um, books on finance, right? Like what kind of questions pop to mind? Like being that you were tax attorney, right? I'm sure that there's certain books that you read, like, oh, I don't think that's true. I don't think that that's right. Like, <laughs> are there books that you just don't like when reading about finance? It's not that I read so much about finance. I like to read articles online. There's actually um, a video that I saw. It was this lady. I think her name was Linda something. I forgot. I think she's based out of um, Atlanta. And she was on the Steve Harvey show. And she helps people with finances. She's not a tax attorney, nor is she. She's been on the Breakfast Club. She white. Excuse me? She'd been on the Breakfast Club. She was. I'm not sure. I I have to look. But she was on the Steve Harvey show and she was explaining to people how they can claim their children. They can actually have their children as employees for tax purposes and have that as a deduction. That way they can have the extra money to pay for diapers. And I think that (laughs) it was very misleading because there's different rules to determine whether or not your child can be an employee. They actually have to do legitimate work. And she didn't really explain that in her interview. So hopefully in the next two weeks, I'm gonna do a video on that and pretty much give my feedback on everything that she said in the video. What books or websites would you recommend for somebody who's watching this right now interested in getting getting into that line of work or just finding out more for themselves? Well, they can actually follow me on Tillman LLC on Instagram. Another thing, too, um, you can look on the IRS website. There's always some great articles for people to read, um, giving tax tips or just any updates. Now, you uh, you know, so we, we, we've heard of the, the famous movie Love and Basketball, but you got you got something coming up called Love and Finances. Yes, I do. It's December the 8th. Yes, I do. Speak on that and uh, what it's about. Speak on it. So that event, I'm going to um, pretty much talk about the changes in the tax reform and explain how it can affect people that are married. Um, Also offer advice to those that are engaged and also single. So I'm going to go through some of the changes, explain to people how they should be preparing for 2018. I'm also talking about ways to save from a tax perspective. And, you know, some people have retirement accounts and explaining to them how retirement accounts can help them from a tax perspective and lower their tax liability. I also have a financial educator, Tavon Jackson. Y'all He's married? Going... No, oh, no, okay. no, no. We're not married. <laughs> okay. That's just a colleague of mine. We did an event together last year. I was looking at a flyer. And I don't know. No. <laughs> you give me someone, the... you know, what's so funny that I sent it to one of my <laughs> Do friends. What you my and bad. she said, I thought this was your wedding invitation. Yeah. I'm like, no, it's not my <laughs> wedding invitation. But no, he's really good at what he does. And he's a financial um, educator <laughs> slash financial <laughs> advisor. And he's going to explain um, different retirement accounts and what he does to help people. He actually has a book on love and finances. So pretty much our two presentations will tie in together. Mm-hmm. I think it'll be a great event for anyone. And it's well worth it because you learn about tax. It's something that people hate talking about, but it's something that needs to be discussed. Mm-hmm. Love and finances, uh, tax advice you should know before you say I do. When is it? It's December the 8th. Where? Um, it's at 8101 Sandy Springs Road in Event Room 2. 
Um, it's at 11 a.m. It will be a brunch style, the great food and also great information. Yeah, yeah. Wait, pull up. Um, what, 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 what building is that? That is where Perfect Office is at. No, oh, yeah, okay. I'm pulling yes. up. Yeah, yeah. That's just down the street, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. it's down the street. So you yeah. guys should purchase a ticket and bring someone. Yeah, we'll be there. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Who are you gonna bring? Myself. <laughs> Singles can come. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, man. You know, saying before you say I, before you say I do. Yes. Not, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Correct. You have a post um on your IG. Um, uh, you took the Nicki Nicki Minaj song um LLC. And you gave um, business advice. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, speak a little bit about that for those who didn't watch it. Okay. Oh, okay. So what, so what I do, I try to figure out things that are relevant and try to apply it to text. So Nicki Minaj has a um, song called LLC. And a LLC is that business entity that's so popular. And when people think about forming a business, they're like, oh, I'm going to do an LLC. So when I listen to the song, I'm like, okay. And she said something about, I just turned it into an LLC. I used my name and turned it into an LLC. So I pretty much explained the difference between a limited liability company, which is pretty much um, the term for LLC, and explained the difference between a sole proprietorship. A sole proprietorship is still a business. It doesn't have the LLC designation. Um, one of the biggest difference that if someone sues you and you have a sole proprietor, proprietorship then they can sue you and take your personal assets but if you have a limited liability company it shields you from personal liability so that's what i explained in that post that you saw on instagram mm. was it catchy did you like it yeah yeah it was catchy <laughs> cool I didn't, I, you know so i didn't even hear the song it made me go listen to the song oh, oh see that's good then. yeah i mean because she's promoting nikki yeah man wow. <laughs> you just put some coins in her bag <laughs> <laughs> but now um here on the podcast a lot of people talk about um having a partner You're talking about partnerships you know in creating a business are you in this by yourself i mean i know you use your last name tillman llc is this solely you or do you have a business partner this is solely me right now but my goal is to work with other people um that is my goal i believe that success is not done in isolation so mm -hmm. um soon i hope that i'm able to work with someone else is it that you can find somebody to you know start this or you just want to do it on your own um, no, I think um, having a partner, finding a partner takes time. You have to be very strategic. Mm -hmm. um, when you're working with someone and it's dealing with business, you have to really understand how they understand money and how they value a business. Me, I can work up all mm -hmm. night, and but that's my work ethic. Like I have a lot, I have hard work ethic. So mm -hmm. I want someone that has some of the same qualities as me, mm -hmm. um, not only just with the work ethic, but having that principle of helping people and giving back. That's by far very, very important to me. Right. Yeah. Um, if someone wants to do it just for themselves, to have money in their pocket and not think about helping others that have money in their pocket, then we think differently. Yeah. So I want to work with someone else and also um, in the future looking forward to hiring someone um, and teach them everything I know about taxes and more. Yeah. With that said, what is success to you? Um, success for me is having the opportunity to do exactly what you love and making sure you're always looking back to help someone else mm. without recognition, um, just doing it from the heart, but helping someone else. I think that's very, very, very important. What advice do you have for people who are going through um, a bad tax situation right now and they want to, you know, um, emerge successfully from at the end? I think the the most important thing is to um, not be afraid to ask for help. I think that's the biggest thing. A lot of times, people want help, but they're just not sure as to who to ask. And you know. Some people have different horror stories, like, you know, I hired someone, they did me wrong. I mean, I heard so many stories where they'll hire someone, they'll take their money, and then next thing you know, there's no communication. But finding someone that you can trust. And I think, you know, within 15 seconds to 30 seconds, you can get an idea of that person and do research, you know, figure out, you know, who's good at what they do, ask a lot of questions. I'll always tell clients, you know, ask me questions. If you want to know if I'm an attorney, you think I'm lying about it, you can research me. But I, I want questions because I want them to know that I care about so them. So you offer 100% satisfaction guarantee? I offer um, reasonable services. Because <laughs> yeah. the thing as an attorney, I cannot say that 
I'm going to get you everything that mm. you ask for because we never know how your case is going to turn yeah, out. Yeah. But my goal is to give it my all. Yeah. Because well, you never know how the IRS facts, can turn out. Yeah. What advice do you have for somebody right now who wants to, you know, go in the same field as for as what you do, uh, tax attorney? Um, I think with anything, you know, just don't give up. I mean, there was a struggle for me to become an attorney. So if this is something that you really want, you have to be focused. You have to be focused and, you know, keep your eye on the prize. No matter how many times you fall, just get back up and try again. Yeah. What advice do you have for people who are pa- who follow their passion, but they don't know how to turn their passion into, into a business? Hmm. So let's say, you know, the practice law or tax law, right? But they don't know how to take that and open a Tillman LLC, for example. What advice do you have for them? How can they start doing that? Um, I think the first step is that you have to have faith in yourself that you can actually do it. Um, And that's what made me do Tillman LLC. Like me having faith that I can actually have a, a actual law firm and I can actually represent people before the IRS. Although I was able to do it years ago, but the fact that I'm an attorney and I'm able to really do this. So just really having faith in yourself. And then two, like having out a plan, figuring out how you want to execute it. So it's one thing to talk about having a passion, but just having things written down. I think that's really important. Um, Prior to me um, forming some LLC, like I had to really pray about okay, can I really do this and really believe in myself? And then I wrote down things that I wanted to do and figured out why do I want to do those things? And I think that's important. If you know your why, it'll come. Mm -hmm. There's no secret sauce. It will just come. Now, running a business, you learn a lot. Like I've made mistakes, and but that's what makes you a great business owner by learning from your mistakes and figuring out what can you do best for the next year. Yeah. How can people get, you know, saying get involved, team my LLC, get, you know, personal contact with you, get a hold of you, all that good stuff? They can actually go to my website. Um, it's Tillman Tax Services. Um, TillmanTaxServices.com. That's for, for tax purposes or for tax representation. It's the TillmanTaxLawFirm.com. And they're able to find me that way. Or they can contact me by phone. My number is 410-645-0527. And they can also follow me on IG. It's Tillman LLC. Are the DMs open for those who are watching? Yes. Yes, it is. Okay. No. Slide. <laughs> <laughs> now, <Nah>, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, last question. If you have to go back, you know, to, let's say, five, no, 10 years ago, and give yourself an advice, what would that be? Hmm. Um, commercial break? No, no, there's no <laughs> commercial break. Um, that it's okay to fail. Um, a lot of times people have these ideas of what they want to do, but the thought of failing really scares them. So they just give up. Hmm. And so if I had to tell myself 10 years or 15 years ago, like, it's okay to fail. Like, it's it's actually okay. And it's not so much just about the failing part, but making sure you get back up and try again. Yeah. Listen, you know your stuff. You you are dope. You're good. Thank you. We definitely appreciate you for coming through, breaking it down. I will watch this over and over through December. And, uh... Yeah, man. I got to kiss my, my tax guy goodbye now because I just found me a new, <laughs> <laughs> a new Thank one. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but we, we, we hope, you know, the, the information was uh, of, of value to our listeners and watchers. I mm-hmm. Yeah. I believe in leaving by quotes, right? Like mm-hmm. everybody has that one quote that leave by. What's yours? Okay. So I'm not sure if I'm going to say the quote verbatim, but it's a quote by Malcolm X. And the quote says along the lines as, don't condemn someone for the things that they do not know. Because at one point, you didn't know the things that you know today. And I think that's really important because if I'm considering hiring someone to help me along the way or just working with clients, there's some things that they do not know. And just because I know them now doesn't mean I always knew that. 
And so it's very important to be patient. Very important to be patient. So that's like one of my favorite quotes. Hmm, appreciate that. Reflex, got to go. Yep, it was Stuck in Radio Podcast. Thank you for listening, watching Stuck in Radio Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, SITM Podcast. Follow us on all social media, SITM Podcast. Um, send us emails, SITM Podcast at, at SITM Podcast 237 at gmail.com for questions, comments, referrals. This episode was brought to you in partnership with Perfect Office Solutions, providing affordable, professional, flexible private office space starting at just four ninety nine. Use pro use promo code SITM Podcast to get ten percent off your monthly lease. Again, use promo code SITM Podcast to get ten percent off your monthly lease. This was stuck in the podcast. And we out. Sir. Sure.